Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This is just a little bit of a side project. I finally got around to putting some way covers on the machine. The way covers are these little rubber bits here just to keep chips off the moving parts. And as this is a round ram machine, I bought one of these. These are for the dovetail ram. They would go under the ram like this on the dovetails, which is a really good, clever design. Uh, it's a lot easier to install than this. This, you can see here, we got the metal band of, um, and just some drill and tap holes. It's not ideal. I'll lower this down so you can get a better view, but the whole point of this is, so I don't have to work as hard when it comes time to clean everything. I kind of just sweep it off. Now, I'm not sure how I feel about this front cover. I think it's gonna get in the way a little bit because I'm gonna be putting my hand here when I, I grab for the gib lock. And I think it has the potential to cover up this front dial. But you know what? It's nice to have a little bit of cover up and protection. I mean, this is a pretty big sheet of rubber and that helps keep all the dirt and grit out of the machine because these are expensive. Uh, and I think actually we can just go around. I'll show you how to lubricate it because that is not super great information. Oh man, now that I'm looking at it, you can see this isn't quite square on here. But I don't think that actually matters. This is plenty wide to keep everything off. But you know, oh well. I, I can fix it later if it really bothers me, but it, it frankly, it kind of doesn't. It's just like, whatever. It, it's a working machine. It's not a, a beauty queen, as they say. These are pretty old-fashioned. I mean, you can get... I want to say it's Acer sells their machine with accordion way covers, which are a little bit nicer, but these are 45 bucks, not a couple hundred. I'm not one to spend a couple hundred bucks when this works. But, you know, here we are. We'll just cover lubrication. So on these old step pulleys, on the newer variable speed head, this is not true. I think up to the sort of the later uh, one and a half horsepower machines, you still have just a couple oil cups for spindle oil. I know the newer very speed heads have uh, sealed bearings, so you're not oiling the bearings. This is for the back gears, and this is for everything from here down. And if you're not sure, lube it, because where does it say on here? Oil twice daily, grease motor twice yearly. I am due for a greasing on this guy, uh, which we can do a video on. You have to pop the motor off. It's not a big deal. There are a couple screws in there. But if you're not sure if you're oiling this enough, you're not. It should be dripping out. When I, I leave it, you can see, well, there's not because I didn't leave the vise directly under the head. But this leaves a puddle of oil on the table when it's being left. And I just use one of these. These golden rods are pretty cheap. And this is an oil gun, not a grease gun, because you have these oil fittings. And there's two here on the saddle, one on each side of the uh, table. You got two on the front of the saddle, two oil fittings, and you've got an oil fitting over here. So um, this machine, actually, you can see where it's drilled for. There's a couple of holes on it. I think this had an auto oiler at one point or one of the one shot pumpy dues that got pulled off. Where I got this machine from, the story I was told is this came out of the Norden Systems plant in Norwalk, Connecticut. We'll just actually back up. You can see the whole thing in her uh, messy glory. This came out of the Norden Systems plant in Norwalk, Connecticut. And it was in their tool room for a while. And I think they got rid of it in the 60s or 70s because they wanted to upgrade to a variable speed head. And they wanted nod. These round ram machines don't have any nod. The head will tilt this way, but it won't do this. The newer machines will do this. It's called nod. So Norden got it. I think one of their engineers brought it home and he had it until the early 2000s when he passed. 
So the fellow I got it from passed in, I want to say, February or March of 2022. I honestly can't forget. So I bought it out of his estate, unfortunately. And, and a lot of the tools in my shop came out of his estate. Uh, I had swept up at their truck shop for a while. So he and his partner were good people. They, they helped me a lot when I was getting started and still do help me. Well, his partner still helps me with stuff once in a while. So he passed, I bought this machine out of the shop. It had been sitting in the back of a box truck for about 20 years uh, and it looked like hell when I got it. Now I got it for pretty cheap. I think it was worth the gamble because it did come with a lot of tools. You know, it came with a surface plate, boring head, vise, bunch of uh, collets, you know, and a lot of other things. I am gonna go run and fix that hand wheel real quick before it falls on the ground. So, That hand wheel there is for controlling the tilt of the head. You, you, un, you loosen a couple of bolts and the head will tilt left to right. Um, also, the see those pockets on the machine? Those hold the bolts that hold the turret in place. So this whole turret can swing side to side. So if you're familiar with the radial arm drill, um, you do have a radial effect on these. Now, unfortunately on this machine, you actually have to grab the whole head and smack the back of it with a hammer to move it in and out. Um, the hammer is because it rusts in place if you don't move it regularly. But back to what we were talking about, how this machine showed up here. So he passed, you know, I just happened to show up at the shop, hadn't seen him in a while. And, you know, the guy who died was, he's one of those people you kind of thought he was never gonna die because he was 82 or 83 when he passed. And he was working until a couple of weeks before he died. So tough old goat. And he passed. And I hate to say it, but I started buying tools out of their shop. Like my post vise, that vise right there, that came out of their shop. Uh, probably everything nice in this shop came out. Drill press, surface grinders, a lot of drill bits, quite a lot of cutting oil. God knows how many hand tools and milling cutters. Can't even keep track of that. Surface plate, check plate. Um, lots and lots of the steel here. Couple, four, three or four of my vices came out of there. Rockwell hardness tester. So, you know, I, I got a lot of connection to this place. And, you know, I was born in Norwalk, Connecticut. So I was born about 20 minutes from where this machine was made. And when I was in high school, I actually did an internship surveying and subdividing the Norden Systems property. I was just happened to be get a internship at the surveyor who was breaking that property up, which was kind of bittersweet because Norden was a fixture in Norwalk for a long time. A lot of people had their jobs there, you know, and I, it's sad to see it go, but it is kind of the natural evolution of things. And, you know, it's just, it is what it is. And now that I'm looking at it again, I did skip one lubrication point. There's a screw hole in the dead center of the table underneath where the vise sits. And you unscrew that, and that's how you oil your XY nut. Alternatively, you can actually get visual access to it by just squirting oil in from the left or the right of the saddle. But that's uh, not what we were talking about. We were talking about Norden systems and these Bridgeport machines. These, these Bridgeports are nice machines, you know, it, I kind of am, I like the look of the round Rams better. They're really art deco post world war II. They're, I the, the turret is more aesthetically pleasing, but you get a lot of improvements on the later, later dovetail Ram machines. Uh, the knees a little bit longer. They change some stuff inside the knee. I mean, that's backwards compatible. That's a bit stronger. You know, the, the dovetail ram is nice because you can move the ram in and out without adjusting your tram on the heads. And the nod is really nice if you're doing goofy stuff that doesn't fit on the table. You can tram the head to wherever your part is, uh, especially if you're boring out really big parts. You know, it. there are some improvements. I think for a hobbyist that's not enough to matter. It so many people will own a machine like this and they'll never even use parts that are 
make two parts that are too big to fit in the vise. So like, why would you even worry about that? You know, if everything fits vertically on between the table and the spindle, it doesn't matter. You can just use an angle plate if that'll fit. And you can get some pretty physically large work on there. It's just for a machine shop that's trying to make money, you, you want a more flexible machine. And the newer machines are better. Like I, the Acer machines are very good. Uh, Wells Index, I think, is the best of the best when it comes to manual mills right now. But they're very expensive. Uh, their base models, Model 747, is a $20,000 machine before you get into shipping and a digital readout. So, you know, the Acer sell really well because they're a $12,000 machine before you get into shipping and a digital readout. And, you know, money matters where if you're a hobbyist and you have the disposable income and you can afford to buy a brand new Wells Index, you know, more power to you. I think you should support an American company and American jobs. But if you're a business and you got to make money and this, this is a business where margins just aren't that good. They're, they're tight. You kind of got to buy the Acer if you want to keep the lights on and you want to pay your bills. So that's really a hard choice to make. And I think from a business perspective, you got to buy the business, but you got to buy the machine that's going to pay your bills, not the machine that is the most fun to use. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about milling machines, this particular bridge port and kind of the, the history of that part of Connecticut manufacturing. It, Connecticut is really a forgotten Titan when it comes to manufacturing. There, there's so many abandoned factories that are just super fun sites now and you can't do anything with them, which sucks because a lot of jobs left in the, the 80s and the 90s, you know, there was the combination of offshoring and union busting. And that's kind of a sad time. But fortunately, I mean, the state, there's still really robust aerospace and there still are a lot of other jobs in Connecticut, not just manufacturing. So again, thanks for watching guys. If you made it this far in the video, thank you so much. I really appreciate the support.